I'm David Biesener. I'm CEO and founder of Voom Technologies. And what I'm here for today is just to introduce you to the Voom Shadow 3. The Voom Shadow 3 is a product that permits you to boot and operate a suspect computer in a forensically sound fashion. This means that whatever applications are on there, whatever operating system it is running, you can actually run it on the suspect computer live without altering the evidence. How does that work? Essentially, the shadow operates as a drive cache for the suspect's boot drive. The shadow additionally, because it is working down at the ATAPI level, that is the SATA bus level, it will work with any operating system, even operating systems that have not been created yet or updated to the next version. So it works with from Windows XP to Windows NT to Windows 10. Uh, it works with Linux, all the different Linux variants. Additionally, it works with custom operating systems. It uh, works with Mac OS. It works with uh, Gamebox systems, so Xbox 360, uh, 360 uh, uh, PS4, whatever those game consoles are. If you need to investigate one of those systems, you can with the Shadow. And it's as simple as plug in the shadow in between the hard drive and that computing system's motherboard. With that, next step will be to look at how the shadow hooks up and some possible operations you might consider. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to uh, start looking at this computer. And so the first thing to do is actually connect it up. So this is your suspect computer. We've got the drive out. Uh, just because it's our, our test system and it's, it's easier, but if the drive is installed in the drive bay, it's also very simple to connect the shadow up. So I've got my, this is my suspect's boot drive, and I will disconnect the power and the, uh, the SATA connection, and I want to power the drive with the shadow itself. So it gets DC power there, and then I want the shadow to be the one directly talking to the suspect's hard drive. And then additionally, I want to take that uh, the I/O cable, the SATA cable that I disconnected from the drive, and I want to plug it into the shadow. And the shadow says motherboard on it. It's very simple to connect up. So the shadow's already plugged into the wall, and we have power. And so now that I've, I've got it connected, and I've got the shadow intervening in between the motherboard and the hard drive, and the hard drive is being powered by the shadow itself. So I'll turn on the shadow. And I will wait for it to tell me that it is ready. Comes up and announces it's for more rev level that it's initializing and now it's ready. And what the shadow's done at this point is it has stolen the hard drive's identification, so it's stolen its identity. So when we power on the suspect computer, the shadow is going to report back that it is this same hard drive. And so the PC will not know, the PC's hardware, the motherboard, will not know that anything has been altered. You can see the PC booted normally. And what I'm going to do is just make some simple alterations so I can demonstrate that the shadow is not, in fact, altering anything at all on the, um, on the suspect hard drive. So you can see now the suspect computer is booting normally. It does not realize the shadow's in between because the shadow is telling the suspect computer that it is its boot drive. Even with modern operating systems from Windows to Linux, even when you boot up the system, it's actually altering the data on the suspect computer. So this is one of the reasons why, if you're doing a forensic investigation, you don't want to boot the suspect computer because you're going to alter the uh, the either the, the clone of the drive or the suspect's original drive. But with the shadow, you can because the, 
writes are actually that are sent from the motherboard are actually stored inside the shadow. Now I can do anything I want. I've booted with the shadow. If there's any applications, if the, the suspect has got um, custom software on there, um, you can use the, the Windows registry editor to look at whatever's in the registry. You can pull up their web browsers and look at the, uh, the internet history that's, that's readily available, whatever the, des the suspect's desktop looked like. Basically, anything that's on there, you can operate and run. Uh, additionally, you can take screenshots. So, for instance, if the, the bad guy's got some bad pictures on there, some obviously bad pictures, you could go through and simply bring up the pictures. So, let's say this is a bad guy picture. You can bring it up, you could take a screenshot, you could print it out, you could store that screenshot on a, um, a USB stick, you could take a video of it, and it's repeatable. You could also do it live in court if, um, if you so desired. And I can do anything I want. I can move stuff, I can delete files. And why is that important? That's important because I may need to, before I ever get through the user password, I may have a Linux boot application that I can boot up and go in and whack the user login password so that I can get ready access. I am eliminating the user password, but only on the shadow. So if I've got the shadow installed, I boot my with a, a forensics tool. It's still operating the suspect's hard drive, but I go in and I delete the password and then I can turn the system off. I'll just do a normal shutdown. And then I can reboot the system. So let's say I whack the password. I take my boot device out there that I whack the password on the suspect's shadow drive, reboot back up and get in to the, uh, the, the suspect's uh, user login. Rebooted, you can see that those files have been moved. So I've got two, one file here, one file here, and these were pictures up here. All right, so just remember that, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a shutdown. Now we're going to zero the shadow, and all that is doing, so I'm just going to turn off. When I zero the shadow, the shadow actually forgets what rights were committed from the motherboard to the hard drive that were actually just stored inside the shadow. All right, suspect computer is now off. And you can see the shadow says it's parked. I'll just turn the shadow off. I will turn it back on. It's going to go through its normal process of identifying that drive, collecting its identification information. But then instead of just immediately rebooting the suspect computer, I'm going to zero the shadow. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. Task done. That's how fast it is. And what the shadow did is, is it forgot that it had written those blocks. So when I boot the suspect computer again, I'll just turn him on. And it will come back up in its pristine state. So I can both preserve necessary changes I may have introduced during the investigation to get past a user login, as an example. And I can always go back to start. For instance, if I'm guessing a user password, and I'm guessing and guessing and guessing, and I'm wrong, and it locks me out. That's not an issue. I can simply zero the, the shadow on the next reboot and try again. This will finish rebooting shortly. And as you can see, those files that I moved are no longer down here. The one that I deleted is back. And you are back to 
the, uh, the unchanged suspect system. As you saw before, um, it's, if, if you want to start over, it's just a matter of shutting off the suspect system and zeroing the shadow, which just takes a second, and then rebooting the suspect system. So that concludes the basic operation of the Voom Shadow 3.